loves and welcome back to my channel so in today's video we are going to learn how to make a very neat and deep plunging neckline so you can see how beautiful this one looks and you are going to need about one yard of fabric for the upper part and you will need um half yard or one yard of illusion neckline as well you can see how beautiful this looks and turning the back you can see that i turned it with a line and so today i'll show you guys how to do this properly so first of all we are going to do our pattern drafting because the pattern is a kind of different from the patterns that i use so i'll fold this pattern so that everything will be clear to you guys so first of all i will measure my shoulder the shoulder is 15 inches divided by two that is seven and a half plus half an inch seam allowance that is eight then i will mark one inch for my shoulder slant and from there i will mark ten and a half for my bust point so the bust point is ten and a half that means the chest line will be eight and a half then the under bust is 13 and a half the half length is 17 and i'll add two inches seam allowance that is 19. so i have ruled the lines already and i have connected my shoulder to my chest line so right now i am going to divide the armhole line by two so 8.5 divided by 2 is 4.25 so i marked 4.25 and then made my armhole curve from there then my neckline will be three and a half by three and a half you can make it three by three but i made mine three and a half by three and a half so i have drawn my shoulder slant so i'll measure three and a half downwards for the neck depth and i will go ahead and connect my neck depth as well so we have gotten the basic measurements right now so the nipple to nipple is eight divided by two that is four plus half inch seam allowance that is four and a half eight divided by four plus half an inch seam allowance then at the under bus i'll mark four half length four and the allowance four as well so i'll go ahead and connect the four at my under bus to the four and a half at my bus point and then i'll connect the rest of the four four inches that i measure sorry i did not label this let me label it right now so that is my chest line my boss point my under boss my half flint and my allowance so i will add every allowance to this pattern i'll add my allowance that's why i made my boss points four and half four inches plus half an inch seam allowance so i'll extend this that line you can see that it is not that straight it's a kind of slanted so i'll extend it to the chest line and i will stop there for now so at the under bust i'll subtract two inches at the side you can see where i marked then i'll extend that two inches line down I will extend it down to the allowance line. Then from the under boss, I will make a curve to meet the boss points. That is for our breast curve. So the, the curve is meeting my boss points already. So at the chest line, I will subtract just half an inch, only half an inch. I will connect from my boss point to that area where I marked half an inch. So that is it for now. So right now, I will mark my yoke so you can make your yoke to start at your chest line exactly but i don't want mine to start at the chest line i want it to start around eight inches you can make yours to start at seven or you can make it to start at eight so i want mine to be at eight inches so that's where the skin illusion will start from then at the chest line i will come up by either one and a half or two inches depending on how high you want that curve to be so i marked one and a half then from that one and a half i will connect to where i marked it at my armhole line so i want my yoke to be a kind of curved so from there i will slant it into the um, chest line so i want the depth of this yoke to be two inches below my under bust that is 19 um that is um sorry that is 19 inches sorry my under bust is 13 and a half two inches below the under bust is 15 and a half so from there i will make a curve to meet my chest line 
from the the area where i raised my chest line i made a curve to meet the chest line then from that area where the curve stopped i will extend a line a kind of curvy or triangular line down to the neck that to the depth of the yoke you can see how curvy the chest line looks you can make it straight but i went off because i want it to be curvy then you go ahead and arrange the curve using your marker so i am currently making it smooth you can see that my neckline is very deep you can make yours to stop at maybe your under boss or your boss point depending on where you want it to be so right now our yoke is out so i will go ahead and extend this dart line i'll extend the center dart line to the curve and then i'll extend the other dart to meet the yoke so right now we are done with the dart at that area and i will label that place the yoke so after doing that i will take my bust measurements and my waist measurements the bust is 14 inches divided by 4 that is 10 plus 2 inches seam allowance 12 the waist is 28 divided by 2, that is 7. 7 plus 2 inches, 7 plus 2 inches seam allowance that we subtracted initially, that is 9 plus 2 inches for the normal seam allowance, that is 11. Remember that I subtracted 2 inches at my dart area, the, cu the cup area. That was why I added 2 inches before adding my normal two inches for seam allowance so right now i will cut out my yoke i'll cut out the yoke i will cut it and cut down into the arm hole and after that i will cut out the arm hole then i will cut out the allowance area and then cut through my half length i'll keep the pattern paper aside then i'll go ahead and cut out the yoke and i'll cut out the shoulder slant and the neck so after doing that i will cut out this dart area So right now, here is the pieces. We have the center, we have the yoke, and we have the sides. So that is not all for now. I will go ahead and divide the center piece into two. We can see the center line. I will go ahead and divide it into two. So before that, I will label the areas that will add seam allowance. I will add 0 0.5 inch round the yoke, and I will also add 0 0.5 inch round this middle one so i'll divide my center piece into two you can see the middle line i divided it around there this will make the yoke to be very easy for you to add so i have written 0 0.5 0 0.5 around all the areas that i will add my seam allowance so when i'm cutting it out i'll show you guys so i have folded this skin illusion and i will fold it again because i want to double the yoke so that it's not tear quickly so right now i'll place the yoke this is the yoke you can see that the center is unfold then i will go ahead and cut out the neckline and the shoulder the armhole as well and i will make a rough cut then after that i will now add 0 0.5 inch seam allowance that is half an inch i'll add half an inch seam allowance around this curved area so i'll cut it down to the pointy area and that is all for the yoke for now so if i open it up you'll notice that i have two pieces right there i have two pieces right here so i will turn one with the other so this is the main fabric i have added a clothes come to the main fabric and as i am cutting i added my 0 0.5 inch at the center the area that will join the center and the yoke 
I have two pieces right here. So here is the side piece. I'll go ahead and cut it out. I will not add any allowance around it. I added allowance only at that area where I will join the yoke to the center front. So here is my lining. I will, I'll cut out my, I've cut out my lining already. So after cutting my lining, I will cut out my wording. You can add a bracco if you want to but i want to use a wording for the people that want to see how to do this with a wording but if you have your brack up you can add it so i'll place my pattern paper on the center piece and i'll notch my under busts i didn't notch it initially so right now i'll go ahead and cut my part So I am done cutting my pad and this is what I have. I have added the wording to the fabric. So I'll go ahead and trim off the excess. So if you want, you can add your wording to your lining as well. There's some people that sew like that. If that is okay for you, add your wording to your lining. So now over to our sewing machine. The first of for the first thing that I will do is to turn the neckline. I will use a black thread for it so that you guys can be seeing how my thread is on this fabric. So I will turn the neckline, and after turning the neckline, you will notch. And you also trim down the allowance. That is how I normally achieve a smooth skin illusion. You trim down the allowance so that it will be very small. You can see the allowance is very, very small. So I will turn it over and I will go ahead and iron. Then after ironing, I will run a stitch at the down part. So I will go ahead and iron this. Then I'll come back and show you guys. So I am done ironing. You can see how flat it is. So I'll go ahead and run a stitch around this area, around the down part, so that two of them will be together. So I am done doing that. And you can see how it looks. So this is what you have here. You can drag it so that everything will smoothen out so over to the brack area so you place each side so that the under boss will be so that the under boss will be equal all of them should align at the under boss then you will join the rest and after joining you go ahead and notch so that you can iron it very well you need to iron it out so i am done joining this is what this one looks like i'll go ahead and notch So I'll go ahead and join the other parts. They will be equal at the under boss. And I'll go ahead and join. So I will notch this one as well. And after doing that, I'll repeat the same thing on the lining so the lining i'll join the way i joined i'll join it the way i joined the main fabric so i am done with the lining i will notch and i'll also iron everything please do not forget to notch notching is very very important so right now i am done ironing as you can see they are very smooth I notched and I ironed it very well. So ignore the wet part. That is the water that I used to iron. So right now, over to our yoke area. So I'll place my yoke this way. I'll go ahead and place the other side so that you guys can understand. So 
you can see the yoke right now so i'll go ahead and mark that area where the yoke stopped so you can notch this area so that you don't forget so i used a chalk to indicate the area where my yoke stopped you know our yoke stopped at 15 and a half two inches below the underbust so i'll flip the yoke and join to one side the pointy part of the yoke will, st will start at that area where I marked. Then I will use a very small allowance, very small, to hold it down on the fabric. So I will go ahead and join this yoke. My camera stopped recording at this stage. So I had to loosen and start at first. So I am done joining the first. You can see that I loosened something there. I am done sewing this before I noticed that my camera was not recording. So... I've joined this area and I'm repeating what I did before. You can see I've notched some areas. So after joining to that area, you go ahead and introduce the other side. You can see how I flipped the skin nets. So you go ahead and place this fabric so that two of them will be equal at the half length. You can see how I placed it then I'll start joining I'll start joining with half an inch so I will join and when I reach that area where the skin net stopped I will bring it out you can see how it is you bring it out and you continue joining but before you do that shift this allowance the first allowance you can see how I shifted it so that you go inside then I'll continue joining So after joining to the first side, place the other one and join. Remember to shift the first allowance, shift it to the side so that it will not interfere. Then I will go ahead and join the other skin net. So if I turn it over, this is how it looks. You can see it is very, very neat. So I had to redo this. I have finished sewing before I noticed that it wasn't sewing. So this is the allowance. I'll keep that aside so right now this is the time to add the this is the time for the lining so this is our yoke our yoke is very fine and smooth so this lining is for the left side and this one is for the right side so I'll go ahead and turn the left side I'll first of all flip this fabric then open the allowance you can see the allowance where, uh, where the yoke stop I'll open it this way and then I'll place the lining on it. I'll join from one allowance to the neck. Then I'll repeat it on the other one. So you can see the center line. So I'll sew very close to that center line. You can see the allowance. So when you are sewing, please remember to shift the other allowance. Remember to shift and then you will sew when you reach there you will cross the area where two of them met and then you will continue joining you now join up until your armhole area i think this part is very easy cutting it open at the center before adding your yoke is the easiest way it will give you a very sharp v at that end part so i'm joining I've reached my armhole area and if I turn it out, you see how it looks. You can see I have covered one allowance. I have covered one allowance and this is the front part. It is very neat. So if you notice most of the clothes on Instagram, they sew it this way, even Vicky James, you will notice that any dress that she makes that has a deep V, they open it. So I notched the net down there. You can see that I notched the net down that area. Then one allowance is remaining. Only this one allowance is remaining. I'll go ahead and place my lining on it. Please notch the net at the midpoint so that you can cross it when sewing. So you go ahead and sew. When you need, you can see that I notched that net more. So you go ahead and sew on the net and then cover it up until the armhole area so this part seems like the hard part but if you can so if you can take your time if you make any mistake repeat so i'll sew up until the 
neck line. So I am done and if I turn it out, this is how it looks on the inside. You can see that it is very okay. This is the outside. It is very neat. Very neat. So right now, I'll go ahead and close the sides. So before I do that, I'll trim off the excess line name. Then after trimming it, I'll go ahead and close the side. So notch, notch, please remember to notch. After notching, top stitch. Top stitching is very important. So I'll notch the other side and I'll take my time and top stitch. So I am done top stitching right now. I'll go ahead and top stitch the remaining side. And after top stitching this area, I will close the side. But if you are doing a, an inseam finishing, you don't have to close that area. You will first of all shape your main fabric before doing this. So that is it i'll go ahead and close the side so if you want this to be sleeve to be a sleeveless like to be sleeveless you will have to turn the armhole area of the skin net you understand right you have to turn the armhole area but if you want to add a sleeve just leave it the way i left it then i've trimmed the excess lining i'll now go ahead and turn the side then after turning the side, I will iron. So I'll go ahead and join the sides. So I am done ironing. So right now I will introduce this hemming gum. I will place the hemming gum around the neckline and iron. It will help hold. It will help um, in holding this lining in place so that it will not be showing on the right side. So I will place it around the neckline and I will go ahead and iron. So after ironing, this is the finished look of our neckline. You can see that it is very neat very very neat if you should follow this method you will not have difficulties in sewing this type of um neckline or this yoke so thank you guys for watching and please do not forget to subscribe also try to join our telegram and our whatsapp group please please do not forget to subscribe it is very important to us so thank you guys and see you in my next video bye